Hello, welcome to the very first YouTube video of Chair Yoga. My name is Angela. For those of you who don't know me just yet, I've been teaching Chair Yoga for just about five years now. Um, and it's such a great practice. It's accessible to everybody if you're working through injury, if you have any issues getting up and down off of a yoga mat. Um, it's really for anybody and everybody. So it's a really great way to get your movement, your flexibility, your strength, and uh, mobility. So if you are ready, grab a chair that has no armrests. Uh, any chair will really work. You can even do chair yoga seated on the couch if you wish. Um, you'll need a block and a ball, just any ball, tennis ball works. I have a half moon cork ball and also a strap. So once you have your things, So start by sitting back in your chair, just resting. You can let your arms rest beside you or place your hands on your belly and then tuck your chin towards your chest, softening your gaze or closing your eyes. We start our practice just by beginning to check in with ourselves, how we're feeling physically, emotionally, mentally. So we'll start by just noticing the rise and fall of our breath. Let the shoulders just relax away from your ears. Noticing the quality of your breath today, the depth. Quite often we breathe quick and shallow in our chest. So we'll begin to explore our pranayama, our breathwork practice, by breathing into our belly. So inhaling, filling the belly nice and round, and exhaling, drawing the belly button towards your spine. Focusing on this belly breathing. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. Your next breath in, filling the belly nice and round. Then moving your breath into your low ribs. You can even place your hands there as they expand. And as you exhale, the ribs knit back together and the belly draws towards your spine. Three breaths here. Inhaling belly, inhaling low ribs. Exhaling low ribs, belly towards the spine. Last breath. Sliding that left hand to your heart, right hand stays on the belly. Inhaling this time, belly expands, little ribs open, and now moving the breath all the way up into the chest. Heart opens, collarbones widen as you fully breathe in here. Exhale, the heart softens, ribs knit back together, and your belly draws towards your spine. Three breaths in this three part breath, the Durga Pranayama. your own time when those breaths are complete. Place the right hand over your left in a self-care mudra, humbling the chin towards the hands, just honoring yourself for showing up today, for doing this practice, for noticing your breath, just meeting all parts of yourself here. I often think of meeting up with an old friend. How are you? How are you feeling? What are you feeling? Where are you feeling? We'll set our intention for our practice, our Sankalpa. Press your palms together, resting the thumbs at the breastbone, sealing this intention into your heart. And rubbing your palms together, just feeling the texture as they glide one on top of the other. Pressing a little firmer, rub a little faster, creating lots of warmth, some heat. And then gently cup your palms over your eyes. Take a slow, deep breath in. 
And exhale, allow the hands to trickle down towards the floor, wiggling your fingers, wiggle your toes, just scanning from head to toe, noticing any places of tension in your body today. Find your hands on the base of your chair as you sit up nice and tall, scooching forward on your seat so that you can stack the knees over the heels and you want your legs about hip width apart. Let the hands drop beside you and then gently tuck the chin towards the chest, rolling your right ear over right shoulder and then placing that right hand just on the shoulder here to draw the shoulder away, deepening this breath and the stretch into the left side of the neck. Nice. And we use our breath as a tool during our practice. So anytime you come into a pose, a posture, a movement, the breath guides each movement. It helps increase oxygen, blood flow, nourishment into our body. We'll release that top hand and slowly tuck the chin towards the chest, rolling the left ear over left shoulder, left hand, Gently placing it on the shoulder here and stretching in this other side, noticing how it feels. Noticing which side is carrying the most tension. We'll release that hand and slowly tuck the chin back towards the chest. Interlacing your fingers, place the hands on the back of the head, using the arms as a passive weight here creating lots of space in the cervical spine, the spine at the back of the neck, the muscles, the back of the neck, gently rock the head side to side. And then releasing the hands to the left, bringing the gaze all the way up through center and up towards the ceiling. Breathing in through your nose, as you exhale, breathing out through the lips like you're blowing out a candle, tuck your chin towards your chest. Two more times. Inhale, lifting the gaze. Exhale, tucking the chin. Last one here. And then bringing your gaze back up nice and center. Hands drop beside you, bringing shoulders up towards your ears and then rolling shoulders back and down. Nice full circles here, two more times. And last one. Allowing the shoulders to drop and be heavy. Inhale, float the hands up overhead. Palms come to touch. Exhale, hands into your heart. Interlace your fingers. Drop the hands down towards the lap as you press forward, stretch as you reach up and releasing at the top here. If there's any of you who are watching this who is struggling with any shoulder pain or discomfort, you don't have to come all the way up overhead. You can always reach out in front, bringing the hands in, interlace the fingers, drop, press forward to that top range of motion and release from there. So lots of options here. Last time, inhaling your variation of this breath. Press forward, lift through the side bodies, releasing at the top. Nice. Bringing your hands to the base of the chair, start to draw the left knee in towards the chest, placing the foot back down, and then the other side comes up just alternating leg lifts here, lift and lower. Nice. One more set. Coming back over to the right side, bringing the knee up. This time we're going to interlace our hands to catch the shin. Option to grab on behind the thigh here or even your pant leg. You can also use your strap. Bringing the strap under the thigh, and just lifting here to hold the leg. From here, we're gonna roll our right ankle. Rolling one way and the other way. And then pulling your toes up towards the shin, so flexion of the foot, and then pointing toes down. So flex, point, flex, point. Pull the toes up, 
Start to hug the knee in a little closer towards the chest and then soften the knee away. Big breath in. Exhale, hug the knee in. Empty the breath all the way out. Inhale, release. And exhale, draw it in. Last time. Nice, releasing the foot all the way down. Coming into the same movement on the other side. Drawing that left knee up, clasping shin, thigh, pant leg, or strap, and rolling this right ankle. And the other direction, pulling your toes up towards you, flex and point, flex and point. Nice, toes come back up, big breath in. Exhale, hug the knee in towards the chest. Nice, four more times. Soften it away for the inhale, exhale, hug the knee in. Two, and last one. Releasing the leg all the way back down. And then bringing your hands to your knees. Start to stack the spine so you're sitting nice and tall. And then we're going to come through our cat cows. So starting with the cat pose, hands slide to your knees. Round the back body, tuck the chin towards the chest. And then tilt the pelvis backwards. Creating a nice arch through the back. Taking a big breath in here to the back ribs. And a full breath out, belly towards your spine. Next breath in, slide the hands along the tops of the legs as you tilt your pelvis forward. So you're tilting the pelvis forward, your belly's coming forward, chest is coming forward, lift the gaze. So we're arching into the low back, shoulders down and away from the ears. We're linking these two movements. Exhale, round the spine, slide the hands forward, tilt the pelvis backward. Inhale, slide the hands back, pelvis tilts forward, lift the chin and the chest. Keep moving with your breath, rounding extension of the vertebrae, inhaling into compression. You can close your eyes here, if that feels good. We're just softening your gaze. Notice as you move here that fluid motion of the spine, noticing the places, spaces that feel tight, restricted, and just going really gently and mindfully here. One more set. Nice, sitting nice and tall, let the hands drop beside you, and again, inhale, floating the hands up, being mindful of any shoulder injuries, palms come to touch, hands come into your heart. Nice. Cactusing the arms, open up through the chest, press down through your feet. So find the four corners of your feet, base of the big toe, base of the little toe, outer and inner edge of the heels, spread the toes wide, palms wide, and then place the toes back on the floor. Nice. Twist to the left. So you're using the core abdominal muscles here to hold you in a twist. Inhale, you're opening up through the chest. And the exhale, as you draw your belly towards your spine, you're deepening the twist. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, twist to the right. Holding yourself here, pressing down through the feet, strong through the legs, strong through the core. One more inhale and a full exhale. Inhaling back through center, and we'll reach our arms up overhead or out in front, lift the gaze, and then let the arms come all the way back, down and around. Coming into full range motion for the shoulders. So again, different ways you can do the same movement, just with more stability if you have any um, sharp pain or old injuries. You can always bring fingertips to the shoulders here, supporting the movement or the circles can just come shoulder height. Okay, so doing what works best for you. In yoga, we practice ahimsa, which is kindness to yourself. So always meeting yourself where you are. Don't worry about the way it should be or the way others do it. Just doing the pose or the movement the way that feels good in your body. 
the circles are going to start to come a bit smaller. Now coming to that shoulder height. Nice. And then smaller yet. And then little tiny pulses backwards for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your palms forward. Cross your right arm over your left, wrapping yourself up in a big hug. Let the chin drop. And then just rock side to side, rock forward and back. So if you could imagine giving a loved one a big hug, you're giving yourself a big hug, big dose of oxytocin, saying to yourself here, thank you body, thank you body, thank you body. One more full breath in, full breath out. Press down through the feet on your next inhale, stack the spine, sit nice and tall, lift the elbows up, and allow the arms to separate as you reach your arms all the way back round. Arms come back heavy. Full circles forward motion this time. So again, knowing your body best, full range here, more supported here, or smaller just out beside you. So doing what works best for you, getting this full mo mobility motion for our shoulders. Okay, these circles will become a little bit smaller, medium size beside you. Nice, starting to build heat in the shoulders, lots of strength building here. And then smaller yet, and tiny, tiny little pulses forward for five, four, three, two, and one. Palms forward, this time left arm over top of right, giving yourself a big hug, rock sway, the head be heavy. This time saying to yourself, I love you, I love you, I love you. One more full breath in and a full breath out. Inhale, press down through the feet, stack the spine, lift the elbows, arms sweep up and all the way back round. Nice. Hands come back to the base of the chair, drawing the left knee in towards your chest. This time holding it here and we're gonna do little pulses, hugging the knee in towards the chest keeping the toes pulling towards the shin. Options here to use your hands for assistance or hands for resistance, pressing your knee away as you lift and lower. We'll go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, last one, hold high, extend the leg long, drop the heel. Nice. So being mindful of this, I always call it the kickstand leg. So the right knee is stacked over the heel. This is the strongest point and the most supportive point for the legs here. Once you have that, press down through the, that foot to lengthen up the spine as you sweep the arms up overhead, palms come to touch. We're gonna split the hands here. So right hand forward, left hand back, twisting, to the right. Nice, keep pulling those left toes back towards you, holding here, full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, both hands come high, turn the chest forward, opposite split. Right hand forward, left hand back. Soften shoulders away from the ears, full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, hands come all the way back up, come to touch and down in Anjali Mudra or prayer pose. Release your hands back to the side rails of the chair and we're doing heel taps here. So you're just lifting and lowering this left leg making sure the leg is extended. If you're getting any pinching in the thigh here you can scooch forward just a little bit more again being mindful of this kickstand leg and you're lifting and lowering staying nice and engaged through the core long through the spine. We'll go for five, four, three, two, and last one. Lower down, hands back to the side rails if they lifted, hinging forward over the legs. So a few ways for this pose. We're coming into a deep hamstring opening on the left side, 
You can keep your hands here on the side rails, long through the spine from the crown of the head to the tail, hinging the chest forward. From here, if you wanna deepen, you can bring your hands to the floor. You can also bring a block to the inside of the legs. And there's three different levels here. So here is one, two, and three. So if you come to a, a forward fold and you get any sharp pain in your low back, that's your body's way of cueing you to ease away. So you come to a bit higher or even back here doing what feels good in your body. Let's take three big breaths here. Full breath out. Inhale, coming all the way back up. Nice. Lift the foot back up away from the floor, a little or a lot. Point your toe, or make small circles with the leg. Nice and strong through the core. Go the opposite direction for five, four, three, two. Last one, pull the toes back, bend the knee, extend the leg. Again, hands can always be used for assistance or resistance. Moving with your breath, inhale, lift, exhale, extend. We got three more. Two, last one, inhale high, out to the side, place the foot. Sitting nice and tall, chest is still coming forward. And then we're gonna do a lift, rotating the hip forward, and then lift, rotating to the side. So your hands can come to the side rails, or again, assistance. We're lifting up, rolling forward, place the foot. Keep moving on the right side, lift, Open, rotate, place. Internal rotation, external rotation. Nice, we got three more. Two. And last one. Nice work. Draw the left side in, and then we're again pulling the knee in towards the chest. Hands for resist or for assistance and resistance. We'll pull the knee in for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Extend the leg long, drop the heel to the floor, kickstand knee over heel. Inhale, hands come up overhead, palms come to touch, split the hands, right hand forward, left hand back. Soften shoulders, holding here for a full breath. Inhale, hands back up overhead, and then splitting the opposite way, left hand forward, right hand back. Full breath here. Inhale, hands come all the way back up, and we'll release our hands down to the chair, coming into a forward fold. So again, all the options, but we're hinging from the hips here. So notice the difference as you round forward and hinge forward. As you hinge forward, you're deepening the stretch for this right hamstring. Also, the more you pull your toes back, the more you'll activate and stretch that right calf muscle as well. Always the option to use your blocks here. And then we'll come into our breath to help open up this right side. Three breaths. Press down through the left foot, coming all the way back up to seated into our heel taps. Lifting a little and tapping or lifting a lot. Core is engaged, spine is nice and long, strong through the body, strong through that kickstand leg. And we got five, four, three, two, last one. Hold the leg high, point the toe, small circles one way, and small circles the other way. For five, four, three, two, last one. Hold the toes back. Bend the knee, lifting high, 
option to assist here, extending the leg and lifting. And we got five more, four, three, two, last one. Extending, bend the knee, open the hip, place the foot. Sit nice and tall, nice. Then we're externally rotating on the right side this time. You might feel that big opening through the inside of the thigh. Hands can come back to the chair. Or you can use your hands for assistance. We're lifting the knee, rotating the knee forward, place the foot, lift the knee high, rotate and place. Internal rotation, external rotation. Nice. We got three more. Two. And last one. Nice work. Place both feet back forward. Press down through your feet. Inhale, both hands float all the way up. Maybe the gaze follows. Exhale, hands through center to your heart. And we come to Uttanasana or forward fold. So you're just hinging forward and resting your elbows on your thighs. So it's a really great space or place to start. We're supporting our low back here. You can stay here. If you're feeling really open in the low back and you want to come a little further, again, the block is here to meet you. And you can come even deeper so by moving the block or even just let the upper body drape over the legs. And no matter where you are, let the head be heavy. And we'll take five big breaths here as you breathe in. Notice the back body, the back of the ribs opening as the belly expands. And as you exhale, that natural letting go, surrendering as the chest falls. When your breaths are complete, press down through the feet lifting up through the spine hands come all the way back up into your heart cactus the arms open the chest exhale twist to the left inhale center exhale twist to the right keep moving with your breath last set over to the right back through center and then we're going to twist and hold here so we're going to drop our arms coming into a seated twist the right hand can come across to the left thigh knees are stacked over heels and then again you're sitting nice and tall as you twist here you can grab on to the side of the chair or even the back of the chair to deepen here depending on how deep you want to twist into the spine as you breathe in any twist, you're really encouraging the breath in the belly. As you inhale, the belly expands, and as you exhale, you draw belly button towards the spine, and may even notice you can deepen the twist on the exhale. Twists are really great for our digestive system. They help get things moving, increase blood flow into our abdomen, stimulating our digestion, and also help release toxins from the belly. One more breath here. And then we'll slowly walk our hands back through center and then just come into this twist on the other side. So starting with that right hand on the side rail, left hand on the right thigh. Option to grab the back of the chair, deepening the twist here. And then just noticing what's happening with the legs, if they're splaying one way or the other way. Knees over heels. Press down through the feet to lift up through the spine, twisting into the belly. And one more breath here. Walking the hands back, so we're sitting forward. And we'll bring the left side up. Catch the leg here again, those options, shin, thigh, pant leg. We're gonna make some circles into this left hip. So rolling just the head of the femur bone round one way 
Maybe you want to come a little deeper and you grab the back of the thigh with one hand so the knee can come all the way out and around. If you want to get into the, the muscles, you release the hand and you're rolling without the assistance of the hand. Let's go the other way. Always are great for our body. So doing what feels best for you. Two more circles. And last one, place the foot, draw the right side in, catch the leg here, behind the thigh, one hand, no hands, little circles or big circles. Let's get this right side moving. And then the opposite direction. Last circle here. And we'll place the foot. All right. From here, we're going to come into alternating knee lifts once again. This time, rather than isolating one side, we're doing both. So you can do one at a time. Lift, open, place the foot. Bring it back. And then alternating right side, left side. Another option here is you gently lean back. You're lifting both knees, open through both legs, come back, tap the feet, and then back again. Let's do five more, whatever one works best for you, either alternating or both at the same time. And then being sure if you're alternating you just end evenly on both sides. Coming back through center, draw that left side back in, catch the shin here, the thigh, the pant leg, and let's roll this left ankle. One way and the other way. Pulling your toes up towards you, draw the knee in. Nice, and release this side. Opposite side comes up. Roll the ankle, one way the other way, pull the toes up, and then hug the knee in, and then we'll release and place the leg. Okay, let's come into some calf raises. So you can do your calf raises by pulling your heels up from seated here. So keep moving up and down. You may also play with your balance by coming to the back of your chair and we're lifting and lowering the heels here. Strengthening the calf muscles helps build this muscle in the back of the leg that helps circulate the blood up through the lower extremities and into upper extremities. Let's do five more. Four, three, two, last one, hold high. Even from seated, we're lifting heels high. From balancing, you're welcome to hover the hands, play with your balance here, and then drop down when that feels complete. Turn your toes towards one another, heels come wide. And then again, lifting and lowering, lifting and lowering. From standing, same thing, or from your seated position. This one, your knees are splaying inward, so you're getting this internal rotation through the legs. Just targeting a different area of the legs as that little calf muscle. Let's go for five, four, three, two, last one. Hold high, spread the toes wide. If you're standing still, play with the balance. Full breath in and exhale to release. Okay, turn your heels wide. Walk your feet out wider than hip width. From standing, we're doing the lift and lower, but you can keep the legs straight. So your heels are in, toes are out, hands are on the chair, lift and lower here. Or from seated, we're lifting and lowering here. And we'll go for five, four, three, two, Last one, hold high. If you're standing, maybe you're playing with balance. Full breath in, exhale to release. Okay, if you're standing, come back to seated and we'll come into this called goddess squat. So your legs are wide, knees stacked to over heels, toes angled out 
and we'll bring our hands to rest on our knees and then we'll inhale that left hand up maybe it comes across the body or up and over depending on what's happening in the shoulders you can let the right elbow rest here as you reach up and over keep the heart open and lifted you can also bring the hand here lots of options we're creating lots of space through this entire left side so as you breathe in you feel those intercostal muscles open and deepening the stretch as you exhale, you can drop the shoulder, letting those ribs knit back together. One more breath. And the exhale, we're gonna come up to a half cactus. Spread the palms, fingers wide. Thanks. Inhale, up and over. Exhale, half cactus. Nice work. Two more times. Last one. Coming all the way back. And then all the way back up and over, creating circles with this left arm. So these circles can come up overhead and around. You can bring your fingertips to your shoulders or just make these little circles out in front. Let's rotate the opposite direction. Full circles. Options are always here. One more big sweep to bring you all the way back up and then other side right hand reaches high exhale hinging over again creating lots of space for this whole lateral side of the body hand can be straight and come to your elbow nice or you can even just right reach this arm across the body if up and over is causing any sharp pain our motto in chair yoga is no pain no pain Okay, two more breaths here, inhaling, deepening the stretch, exhaling, softening the shoulder. One more, and exhale, half cactus the arm. Next, three more times, inhale, up and over. Coming back, half cactus, nice. Two, last one, bring it all the way back and all the way back forward for those full rotations for the right shoulder, up and around, fingertips to shoulder, or just out in front. Moving the opposite direction now. Two more circles. And the last one to bring you back up to seated. Okay. Lift both heels up, we're gonna drop the left heel, keep the right lifted, and then switch. Left lifts, right lowers, switching side to side. Nice, one more set. And last one here, lifting both toes, inhale both hands up overhead, and then down into your heart, lower the heels. Cactus the arms, open the chest, and inhale, lift the heels, lift the arms, maybe the gaze, and then bringing your hands back down through center as you lower the heels. Last one here, open the chest, lift up, reach high, back down, lower the heels. Nice work, bring your hands back to your knees, and then we're gonna bring our hands, oh sorry, back to our chair, and we're gonna windshield wiper the leg. So let the left leg drop, you can even lift that left hip, turning forward and back, forward and back on that top toe mound. And then same thing, other side, drop that left heel and then the right side lower and lift, either the knee movement or this time the right hip pops up and you sweep forward. Okay, we're gonna come back over to this on the other side. So we're gonna lift the heel on the left side, drop the knee, turning it forward, and then bringing your right hand to the back chair, walk your right knee, your, so your right leg, so your knee stacked over your heel, coming into a modified warrior pose. So here, you can keep a bend in the leg, keep that heel high. You can also extend the leg out, softening the knee, 
and then planting the foot on the floor for a warrior one, turning the chest forward. And then maybe that left hand comes high, maybe the right hand comes high. Holding here in your warrior. And we'll release our hands, bending back into this left leg, walk the legs back into your goddess squat, lifting the right heel, dropping, turning the knee, walk the left side out to the side this time, left hand to the side wheel of the chair, keeping this nice bend in your knee, heel lifted, or option to straighten that leg, finding that outer edge of the foot on the floor to 45, and then turning the hips forward for your warrior one, right hand comes high, softening the shoulder, maybe left hand comes high. our hands and walk our legs all the way back forward this time and grab onto your ball so you can use any ball for foot rolling we use our balls for foot rolling in chair yoga so we'll start on the left side you can bring the ball underneath your foot and just move the ball forward and back forward and back you can also do foot rolling from standing so from standing Again, you're just coming to the back of the chair for your balance and your support. Only difference from standing is you want to be more mindful of your standing leg. So make sure you have a little bend in the knee, the standing leg as you foot roll. Your posture is nice and tall. Notice any sharp pain in the foot, any places that feel really tender or sore. We'll bring the ball to our heel, rolling in circles on our heel, one way and the other way. Bring that ball to the outer edge of the foot in the center, up and down motion, through the center of the foot and then the inner arch. So up and down, side to side here. So a lot of the time when we don't have supportive shoes or we're walking on hard surfaces, the flexibility of our feet um, declines. When our feet become inflexible, then it pulls our toes out of alignment. It decreases our balance because we have much more balance when our flexibility in our feet is open. We have more grip rather than this small surface area when the muscles are tight and they pull the bones all close. Foot rolling really helps with plantar fasciitis, with bone spurs, with any um, in grope toenails, it really helps with any of those fun foot disorders we get because it stimulates the blood flow into the feet. And we'll bring the ball now to the diaphragm portion of the foot. So that's this section here just underneath the top toe mound. So in reflexology, this is the diaphragm. So I often cue big belly breaths as we roll out this spot here. Inhaling through the nose, belly expands. Exhale, belly towards the spine. Nice, top toe mound, side to side. And then toes to the ball, lift your heel high. We're rocking the ball from the big toe to the little toe, creating space between the toes. Nice, and we'll roll out this left side. And then we'll bring the ball to some stillness. Come to standing, or if you're seated, just both feet on the floor. Notice how they feel, if they feel different. Just noticing, becoming more in tune with your feet. Okay, now we'll roll the other side. Again, from standing, you're softening your standing leg, so you're having a slight bend in the knee. And you're rolling the ball up and down, up and down, from standing or from your seat. And then we can notice if this side has more tension or less tension. We typically hold more tension in one side of the body over the other. We'll bring our ball to the heel, making some circles on the heel. And the other way. And then that outer edge through center to the 
inner arch up and down motion a few times. From here, finding that diaphragm portion of the foot, so just below the top toe mound, side to side here, and we're cueing two big breaths. Work, top toe mound, side to side, some small circles. And then toes to the ball, lift your heel high, working the ball from the big toe to the little toe, side to side. You can do foot rolling from home with any ball, a tennis ball. I've also picked up uh, those bouncy balls. You can get at the dollar store, any ball really works. And then we'll just roll out this side and tuck our ball somewhere. It won't be a tripping hazard. And then walking around back to your chair if you were standing. And from seated, we'll grab onto our strap. With our strap, we're going to bring it to catch our left foot and extend our leg here. So you can lift a little, you can lift a lot. You can bend the arms so that you're hugging the arms into the side of the body here. I just shifted to show you. Or you can extend your arms long. So it's more of a passive hold. Just make sure you're taking the shoulders away from your ears. So here we're opening the back of the leg, the hamstring, and the calf muscle. Okay, next breath in, lift the heel. And exhale, lower the heel. Little movements go a long way. Last time, bring the strap into your left hand. Right hand can come out beside you, shoulder height, or down to the chair. So you sweep the leg over, opening that inner thigh, and then back through center. Nice. Two more. And last one. Bringing the leg back through center. Right hand hangs on. Left hand comes out beside you or again down to the chair. So you cross the center point of the body. So that could be up above the knee and also be down low here. And again, just soften the knee. One more breath. And then back through center, both hands to the strap. And then you're just supporting the leg as you swing the knee joint. Extend and bend, extend and bend. Okay, we'll come into a pigeon pose on this side. So if you get your, can get the ankle on top of the thigh, you can rest here, you can even drop the strap. If coming here is causing a lot of sharp sensation in that low back or that outer glute, a more supportive way to do this pose is you hook the ankle to your shin bone and then you use the strap as a pulley system. So if you're here, you're still working to drop the knee, the right knee is stacked over the heel. And if you're opening here, maybe you wanna go a little further, you just pull the strap up, so you're lifting the leg a little higher. Eventually, over time, based on your bone structure, the knee can, or the ankle can rest on the thigh. But that's not, for, that's not always there based on each and every one of our unique mobility and openness through the hips. From here, if you want to deepen, you start to hinge forward from the hips. You can close your eyes. Once you round, or once you hinge forward, you can round into the back. And we'll take three big breaths here. This pose is really great. One to know you can do this from uh, home. You can do it seated on a couch. You can even do this posture in bed. The opposite way though, you're laying on your back and then you bend your knees, cross the ankle, and then you pull the legs towards your chest as you begin to open. Okay, we'll release this side, release this leg. And we'll do the same series with the strap on the other side. Catching the left or the right side, extend, lift and lower, lift and lower, a little or a lot. And then bringing the strap into your left hand, right hand beside you or down low. Open the leg, nice and wide, and back through center. Two more times. 
last one. Nice. Left hand hangs on to both straps. Right arm out beside you, crossing the midline of the body. Again, up high or down low. Whatever feels good. We're pausing and breathing there. Bringing hands back to grab onto both straps. Supportive swing for the knee. Nice. Pigeon pose on the other side. This might, side might feel a lot different than the other side. So doing what feels good, you don't have to do both sides the same way if it doesn't feel good for you. So the ankle can cross over the thigh. Again, option to hook the ankle to the shin bone. Use the strap on the outside of that left leg as your pulley system. Drop the knee, sit nice and tall. And to deepen, you're hinging forward. And once you hinge, you can then round. And we'll breathe here for three breaths. And starting to sit nice and tall, we can drop our strap, release our legs, sit back in our chair the same way we started, we finish our practice. So chair shavasana, arms are heavy, resting beside you or resting on your belly. You can humble the chin towards your chest. Close your eyes if that feels good. Just taking a few last moments in stillness. Bringing our awareness to our body. Any sensation, any shifts or changes. Noticing the breath. Noticing if there's any changes or shifts within our breath. You can stay in stillness as long as you wish. When you're ready to come out and complete the practice, you slowly begin to wake up your resting body by wiggling your toes, wiggling your fingers. Letting the hands drop if they were crossed, rolling the wrist, calling all of your energy back as you slowly rise back up to seated, pressing yourself up and bringing your hands to prayer pose or Anjali Mudra. Humble your chin towards your hands, honoring the wisdom of your heart. Moving hands from your heart, placing them on your forehead honoring the intelligence of your mind. And the power of thought. The divine light within me sees the divine light within you. Thank you all so much for joining me in my very first YouTube chair yoga video. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste. If you would like to see more videos, please follow along, subscribe to Yoga in Canoe, and I'll see you at the chair.